Hey everyone, how's it going Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Fight Club quest. Now, for this quest you need the following requirements, so you must have completed the prequel quest, which is Our Man in the North, and you must also have a rank 9 in overall Menaphos reputation. So like my previous guides for Our Man in the North and Crocodile Tears, um, the easiest way to get your reputation up if you're struggling is there is a uh, clan chat that you can join called Soul Lobby or Soul Lobby FC. I have this written in the video description. And basically, they kind of shout out what worlds and locations the Soul Obelisks are at, which you can use to gain up to 20,000 reputation a day. So um, I did that uh, literally for about six, seven days um, until I got right up to rank nine. So that is what I'd advise to do if you're not currently at that point. No other actual uh, requirements are needed. However, you're going to need to be able to defeat four Menophyte Palace Guards, uh, level 105 and a level 200 Pharaoh. The actual fight with the Pharaoh I'll talk about a little bit further on in the quest as you'll be able to set up before fighting him. Uh, that's it for requirements, now onto the items. So again, there's no actual items required, however you are going to need weapon, armour and food to be able to get through the uh, boss battle. Uh, and the only other items recommended are the Feathers of Mud, which you obtain by doing the Shifting Tombs minigame. So that's it for requirements and items, now on to the quest starting point. So we're currently at the Amenophos Lodestone, which can be accessed via the Lodestone network. And to start this quest we need to speak with Hassan in the Merchant District and ask him um, and he will ask you for your help. So once you start speaking with Hassan, Osman will appear and ask you how you see the city and that your reputation with its leaders have provided him the perfect opportunity to sneak in after his exile. Osman reveals the dark secrets of the city and reveals his plans to not only overthrow the usurpers on the throne but to restore social justice. Now in order to overthrow the pharaoh you need to get the favour from each of the leaders of the different districts and so this bit's a little bit like the one small favour quest um, you need to go around and talk to different people in order to, uh, in order to obtain what they require so you'll gain their approval. So the first person we need to speak to is Essan, who is in the same room as we are now. Osma will reveal that he has a secret deal with her. So speak to her and she will say she will assist in the coup if she keeps the position and power in addition to new influence within the city. Hassan reveals that Osma has already promised her these things. And finally she will ask you to speak with Wadod about some port workers that are on strike over unfair wages. So we now need to head to the port district so the quickest way to get there is if you use the quick travel option via the shifting tombs sort of entrances you can choose to go straight to the port district and then you need to find uh, Wadud in the pub. So he'll inform you that he knows about the coop but not what Osman wants of him so he'll agree wanting social change in the city and believing Osman to be the lesser of two evils however he wants you to find some people willing to load cargo onto his ships from this point on as his sailors don't like the menial work and he asks you to speak to the workers. So we now need to go find Batal in the worker district, so like you did a moment ago, use the Shifting Tombs uh, shortcut to get to the worker district and you'll find him next to the bonfire. He tells you of the jobs crisis in his district and how his people are starving and fear for loss of what few jobs they do have. You tell him of Osman's revolution and he's sceptical but will agree to part in the coup on the condition that workers may retire once they reach a certain age. In order to do this they must be granted imperial signets from the pharaoh but lately he has stopped this tradition and he asks you to speak with those in the imperial district to resume these proceedings. So we now need to head to the Imperial District, again via the same method, uh, and speak to Akomet. You inform her of the coup, and she is alarmed that you would speak so brazenly and openly about it. She agrees, however, that he is unfit to rule, admitting that she has seen him fall into psychosis and lose touch with his people and city. The only condition is that the coup be bloodless, insisting that the pharaoh get the mental help he needs. You admit that Osman also wishes for it to be bloodless and she agrees so long as you can get the other city leaders on board. She'll come up with another only condition that you bring the Jack of Spades to justice. 
So we now need to enter the lobby of Shifting Tombs and speak to Ozan. You will inform him of what's going on and ask if you can take him prisoner. He'll decline but instead gives you a cow and insists that you can cover it in blood to make it look like he's dead. So if you go to the Merchant District via the Shifting Tomb shortcut, you want to use Ozan's mask with the bucket of blood next to the fish stall and it will make it dirty. You then want to return that to uh, Akomet in the Imperial District. So she's shocked that you killed the Jack of Spades but is impressed that you've claimed to have burned his body and will give you the Imperial Signet. You now want to give this Signet to Batal in the Workers District. He will thank you and promises to pass him out to the most deserving and he'll give you an employment certification promising to send his best and brightest to Wadud. So you now want to give this certificate to Wadud in the Port District. He will say that he will ensure the worker strikes are brought to an end and will direct you to Hesen so you want to return to her back in the Merchant District. To inform you she's already received word that the strikes have stopped and she has given you her full support. So we're now coming up to confronting the Pharaoh. He is actually quite a difficult enemy to defeat unless you're a pretty decent combat level or quite a high combat level as he's got 150,000 life points so a lot of uh, damage to do on him. So in order to initiate the boss battle you need to speak to Hassan and he'll teleport you to the throne room and that's when you'll then confront the pharaoh. So use this time to set up with what you're going to use. Now ranged is considered the best sort of combat style approach to him mostly because he uses magic and also a lot of his attacks um, you can dodge if you're moving around a fair bit and therefore obviously using range will allow you to keep that distance so um, obviously bring the best range gear you can however if you're a specifically low range level then you may need to go with melee or, range to, uh, melee or magic approach. So when you're ready, speak with Hassan and you'll be teleported to the throne room. When you arrive, the city's faction leaders will watch you fight from the far corners of the room. Uh, first, before you can in, uh, face the pharaoh, you must battle four level 105 Menophyte Palace guards. Two of them use melee and have 20,000 life points, and the other two use magic and have 25,000 life points. Now it is quite possible to kind of get them lined up so if the magic users at the front, the guards that use melee can get sort of stuck behind them and then that will allow you to sort of face one or two at a time maximum, um, minimising the amount of damage uh, done to you. Um, there's no real strategy with these guys, you just want to try and pick them off as quick as you can. So once you're dead you'll reach a checkpoint so from this point onwards if you do happen to die um, you will return to this point so you won't have to fight the guards again. So the pharaoh will now approach you with 150,000 life points and he can be quite difficult if you're not prepared. The pharaoh's battle will apply corruption which is similar to the Sophanum Slayer dungeon so that's why the feathers of Mars are recommended to bring with you um, as that can then cleanse the corruption and reduce the damage taken from it. 
Um, now, he has quite a few different special attacks, so he'll use these after every three auto attacks. So the first is a corrupted fire attack that covers parts of the field, and if you stand still for too long, we'll deal 1,000 damage per tick, so that's uh, using a lot of moving around to keep out of them. The second attack, he'll yell either Neil or Usurpers and will stun you, dealing 100 damage that rapidly increases until you break free. Now, in order to break free from that, you need to use the Freedom ability, so it'll be quite helpful to have that on your ability bar so you can quickly access that whenever he uses that attack. The final attack is Field of Wrath of the Gods. He will hit three magic attacks in a row, dealing anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 damage each. Protect or deflect from magic will reduce this damage greatly. Now, if you do die here, it isn't a considered a safe death. Your gravestone, however, will appear outside the Imperial District, west of the Shifting Tomb's entrance. Um, so you can get back to that quite quickly if you do die. It's just teleporting back to Menaphos Lodestone and then heading to the Imperial District from there. So you haven't got to worry about losing anything as such. So really, the main strategy with the Pharaoh, obviously he's got a lot of life points, so you want to keep trying to hit him as much as you can with much sort of damage repeating attacks, um, just to kind of uh, get those points down a fair bit. Obviously you're going to want to move around a fair bit as well, which will help you sort of um, reduce the damage from the corrupted fire attack. Um, obviously make sure you've got your freedom ability ready, so when he does use that special attack you can block free of it, and obviously having protect from magic uh, on the whole time will help. Uh, massively as well. Now you'll notice yourself get through quite a fair amount of food so bringing a beast of burden with food in its inventory will help massively as well and ensure you manage throughout the whole fight. Now after losing approximately half his life points there will be a small cutscene where the pharaoh will remove his mask which will reveal his corruption and it will then summon fire around him for a short time which will make melee difficult if you're using it. His magic attacks will also start hitting harder after his mask is removed. But yeah, other than that, I can't really give you any other tips really with this particular fight. Like I said, range is the best recommended uh, uh, combat style. Obviously, the special attacks you know about, which I just spoke through, so keep an eye out for those three. And other than that, it's just a case of keep moving around and doing as much damage to him as you can. I think it took me two or three tries to successfully kill him, so you know, just bear that in mind. But again, there's no real risk to losing anything as you can respawn to your gravestone quite quickly. So when you defeat the pharaoh, he'll tell you that once upon a time he prayed to the gods to help him rule, but the only one to answer his prayers was Amaskut who corrupted him. His corruption by Amaskut has been lifted and desires that you pass judgement, and he'll realise what he did was horrible and begs for mercy. At this point you can then decide the pharaoh's fate, you can either exile him to the Ark, execute, imprison or enslave him. Uh, however, regardless of your decision, Osman will appear and declare that it is his right to choose. He'll then kill the pharaoh by stabbing him in the neck with a dagger. A cutscene will follow with Amaskut, Jabari and two thralls at the soul altar, with the Karad Ib floating above. Two Mechan will speak through the thralls and Jabari, telling Amaskut to forget her anger and give up on his task, that he is afraid. Amaskut insists that destruction is necessary and screams she is not his daughter, and will finally yell I am Amaskut, and power shoots out of the Karad Ib into the four people present and the screen will fade to black. And then after this cutscene, it will come up, congratulations, you completed the Fight Club quest, you're awarded one quest point, access to the Soul Altar, which I'll show you where to go uh, to find that in a moment, uh, access from Safanum to Menaphos via the bridge between the two, the Pharaoh Mask and Scepter Overrides, a relic of Tumekan, which will give you 7,500 reputation with a faction in Menaphos of your choice, and two treasure on the keys and two hearts of ice. So there we are, quest complete. So this quest is a really short one to be honest with you, the most sort of time consuming bit and difficult bit of it will be the battle with the pharaoh himself, but as long as you're setting yourself up for a decent fight you shouldn't have too much trouble with that part. So obviously one of the rewards is uh, having access to the soul altar, so naturally like all the other altars you will need a soul talisman in order to uh, gain access to it, which are dropped by creatures from the Safanum Slayer dungeon, but you can buy it quite easy from the Grand Exchange. 
Now to find the salt altar you need to go to the Imperial District and sort of go to the very western end of it. Uh, you'll notice there's a musician near a fountain. So when you get near the fountain with the talisman in your inventory, click it and the water will drain from the fountain revealing a staircase leading down. You can then go down the staircase and you'll see the uh, actual entrance to the altar itself and then once you click the altar you'll be then transported to uh, the soul altar. So in order to actually craft soul runes you'll need pure essence and level 90 rune crafting. So yeah, really, that is the only sort of major reward from this quest. The rest of it is pretty sort of standard cosmetic overrides, another relic to get more reputation. Um, I am under the impression there will be a sort of sequel quest uh, with uh, involving Amaska and what she'd done at that cutscene. So uh, obviously this quest is going to be required to be completed in order to do the next one when that does come out. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. If you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.